Today's cars and trucks contain more circuitry than a Foxconn factory, and certainly a major reason for this electronics explosion is the proliferation of infotainment systems, some of which are far better than others. Hello again and welcome to The Shortlist. You know, it's crazy how modern vehicles offer so many features and amenities. I remember my dad bought a new Chevy work truck in the early 1990s, and it came with a standard AM radio. Highfalutin FM was optional. Don't even ask about a tape deck. Now jump forward a quarter century, and drivers expect even the most affordable cars to come with some sort of infotainment technology. Automakers, of course, have risen to the occasion, and there are tons of these systems on the market today. And here's what we, the staff of Autoguide.com, think is best and what needs work. Starting things off, an easy recommendation is FCA's Uconnect system. Fast and intuitive, it's been a winner since day one. Available in a variety of flavors in a huge range of vehicles from the tiny Jeep Renegade to heavy duty Ram trucks, it's versatile and offers all the functionality you'd expect, like in-vehicle Wi-Fi, support for Amazon Alexa, and over-the-air updates. Next, the latest version of Porsche Communication Management, PCM for short, which our own editor-in-chief Jody Lai has raved about. In the new Cayenne, it features a huge 12.3-inch widescreen display right on the dashboard. Bright and crisp, it supports common smartphone gestures like swiping and pinch to zoom. But more importantly, the menu structure is super intuitive, which of course goes a long way toward minimizing driver distraction. This sport-tuned luxury utility vehicle also gets Porsche Advanced Cockpit, a reconfigurable digital instrument cluster with two 7-inch screens flanking a central analog tachometer. Now, for even more choice, Apple CarPlay is supported, though curiously, Android Auto is not. A certain Dearborn-based automaker has made significant infotainment strides in recent years by replacing its always sluggish, often buggy My Ford Touch system with Sync 3, which is far faster and appreciably easier to figure out. Like Uconnect, its layout is dead simple, plus it offers a variety of apps like NPR One, Spotify, and even Waze. As you might have guessed, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are both supported. Audi's multimedia interface, MMI for short, has been one of the industry's leading infotainment systems, offering lots of functionality while still being relatively easy to use. Now, elevating their game, in recent years it's gained support for handwriting recognition and boasts of a simplified arrangement of function keys around its main control knob. But the real show is Audi Virtual Cockpit, which replaces traditional analog gauges with an immersive and reconfigurable display. With so much eye candy, it's hard not to love this setup, which is offered in many four-ring models, from the small A3 sedan right on up through the range. Moving forward, let's highlight a few undecideds, a handful of infotainment systems that show promise, but ones we can't quite fall in love with. And we start with Volvo Census Connect. At first glance, the latest version of this multimedia technology looks like a winner with its gigantic portrait display and fairly minimalistic home screen, but poke around for a little while and you'll probably find the performance a bit lacking and interface cluttered. It's a similar story with BMW's pioneering iDrive system. The latest versions offer tons of functionality, from remote software updates to Microsoft Office and Skype integration. You can even interact with it in multiple ways, the traditional control knob, the touchscreen, voice commands, or even gestures. And it's all a bit overwhelming, and perhaps that's its main weakness, offering too many features. Chevrolet's MyLink system is far simpler in comparison, but still, it's never really wowed any of us. It mostly works all right, though some of the graphics are hideous with more shine than a glazed donut. Overall, it's not a bad bit of kit, but it's not our favorite either. Okay, so now for a few losers, infotainment systems that just can't compete with the industry's best. Despite a reputation for building top quality vehicles, Toyota really seems to lag in the field of multimedia technology. 
Entune 3.0 is the brand's latest and greatest system. It's offered in the Avalon, where I experienced it most recently, plus the Camry, Sienna, and Mirai. To be polite, it's, well, a complete mess, with a user interface that's catastrophically obtuse. And thank the Lord Almighty God in heaven above that Apple CarPlay is supported. Finally. Android Auto, not so much. You guys are screwed. And even if you pony up the cash for a Lexus, of course a platinum level Toyota, things aren't much better. This luxury brand's remote touch interface is despised by both Jobs and our news editor Sam McEckern. And I'm not quite as vociferous in my disdain for it, but I do agree with them. It sure ain't worthy of praise. Another disappointment on this list of winners and losers is Infinity In Touch, an infotainment system with two screens for twice as much confusion and difficulty. I recently experienced this setup in the brand's racy Q60 coupe and found it to be rather chaotic. Navigation is located up top, while the lower display is home to the climate controls, audio system, and a variety of vehicle settings, many of which are buried under layers of menus. Making things worse, each user interface looks like it was designed by a different team on an entirely separate continent. Toss in a weird mix of hardware and software buttons, and you end up with a big fat NOPE! Nissan Connect has no fans here either. In the Titan, at least, it looks like something from about 1998 with gritty graphics and a Byzantine UI. I'll pass on this one as well, thanks. Subaru's Starlink infotainment technology hasn't won the autoguide.com editors over either. Now, they may have improved things in their more recent models, but performance has been a major issue in our testing. There's simply nothing fast or fluid about it, which is a shame, really. And that's the end of another short list. I do hope you enjoyed this little rundown of infotainment systems. You know, there aren't many that have really rocked our world, but the functionality offered in even low-priced cars and trucks these days continues to amaze me. Anyway, thank you again for watching, and we'll see you next time. But you know, if there's one vehicle with a particularly interesting infotainment system, it's the Range Rover Velar. This luxury SUV has two screens. There's one up on the dashboard that handles your navigation, and then the one below that has like climate control functions. It's all reconfigurable, very cool. We just did a video on it, another short list. Make sure to check it out.